Hi guys and girls, and thanks for joining us on another, on another Team LRF podcast. Uh, due to popular demand, uh, we have got Corey Fieldhouse back. Corey, how are you doing? Not bad, brother. How are you? Yeah, very well. Very well. How's your week been? Busy. Busy starting off. All very productive stuff. Infrastructure and coaching, really good. To-do lists coming out my ass. I've uh, still taken on your power list idea from back in the day. What was that? Over over 12 probably longer than that 18 months ago yeah I would um, say, yeah the power let them make that's such a great tool man like if, if even on the weekend courses when we do the weekend courses i say to people if you take away one thing from this course take away the power of the list yeah learn how to do it properly it's such yeah. a great tool man it's if it's not written down it won't happen instant gratification you can go to bed a winner every single day yeah. otherwise you just end up like what we like we discussed spinning the wheels spinning too many plates not getting anything done being a busy fool doing fuck all so yeah busy 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 peak week this week as well for yeah. a couple of the clients which is good exciting yeah um, you've got people at uh, the pca or two bros or both um pca I've got uh classic classic physique and bikini or well, Madison got bikini but we got bikini yeah, wicked. This week. I, think I think I've got five, uh, six actually, six at the two bros. I think it's five or six. Uh, yeah, five or six at the two bros on a Saturday. Yeah, I've personally got two on the PCA, yep. but then Mia's got one, Jack's got two, and Charles got one as well. So there'll be quite a few rolling out. As well. Yeah, so the LRF fucking army will be turning up. <laughs> and you'll see that you'll see them t shirts left, t shirts, right. t shirts flying about. Down. Yeah, we give obviously we give everyone a tan and t-shirt. It's just like it's good for them to wear, and it's obviously it's great brand exposure as well. And then you know they, they feel a part of something. You know they get the t-shirt, they feel good. You know I know you do the t-shirts and that. Like just, yeah, they feel good, man, and they feel good wearing it, and they feel proud representing you. And yeah, people see that t-shirt, and you know they almost know, oh, that person's gonna be good. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, the thing is, is if you're gonna if you're gonna do branding, like you have to, you have to be able to like walk the walk as well do you know what i mean like if you're walking around in t-shirts like you've got to be and you're going to put yourself out there that's what i mean like team bring the heat on the back of my back of my jumpers and t-shirts like if you ain't turning up and doing anything it's probably like negative against your brand as opposed to positive so you've got to uh you've got to turn up but people people know the score especially when you're walking around with that big russian fucking hat on that you've uh, <laughs> that's right. i like to put that away mate i oh, uh, don't blame me mate no, i loved it mate i love that hat I love that hat, man. That, yeah, getting all classic. That was during lockdown, actually, as well. That, that yeah. was that was actually, you know, where I wore that. That was actually the pro show. That yeah, I wore that as well. Like, yeah, that was the pro show. That Rascal, yeah. Mister Mister Against the Grain, we'll call you. That was a banger. Hat, but man. rightly so. Yeah. But no, yeah, it's been a good week. I just I actually signed up to this. Um, I didn't tell you actually. I signed up to this Cardone University thing. Um, yes. Do you know Grant Cardone? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, like, uh, entrepreneur, philanthropist. Yeah. Mr. So Tenex. Second. It's Mr. Tenex, isn't it? That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The OG Tenex. The yeah. OG Tenex. So yeah. yeah, he um so he runs this university program. Um, and it, you can either do one of two things. You can either have like a coach who coaches you through the program and then you can yeah. ask questions with, which is mad expensive. It's like two and a half grand a month. Or yeah. you can um just go through all his pre-recorded videos, which is ninety-seven pounds a month, which is quite a big difference. Yeah. yeah, or it's actually ninety-seven dollars. Actually, we're both pricing those dollars. I think it's two, yeah. two thousand three hundred dollars, or ninety-seven dollars on a on a rolling, uh, yeah. rolling monthly. So I'm going to sign up to that and get everything moving, just to see how he does his sales scripts, to see how he does his processes. Obviously, the guy's you know multi-millionaire. He's got yeah, you know, like hundreds of people working for him. So even if you just take one percent of what he knows, like it's going to be well worth it. So yeah, yeah. and there's there's. There's a crossover as well. Like I, I think if I remember rightly, when I've um, when I've read some of his stuff before, like he's he's massive in real estate, absolutely fucking yeah. huge, like flipping properties left, right, and centre. And um, but his that ten x is like if you do ten times the work, you literally physically cannot miss. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like if you do, if you're doing a hundred sales calls, or if you're doing a, if you're doing hundred times a hundred, do you know what I mean? Like the amount of yeses that you're gonna get, all right, you're gonna get a lot of no's, but you're gonna get a hell of a lot more work done. Um, I think that's really positive, mate. Yeah, well, I'm always just always trying to, like, like I said to you earlier, like I'm always trying to find ways to just improve things or just to spend a little bit more of my time because, like I said to you, a lot of my work is sort of done before midday. Like, yeah. you know, I'm 
by, by 12 o'clock, I'm sort of cracking on. And don't get me wrong, like, I wake up at four in the morning, so I've still done a good eight hours work a day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of my work is done by 12 o'clock. By the time I sort of have an hour or 30 minutes to catch up on a nap and cap off onto sleep, like, then the rest of my day is, you know, filled by, you know, secondary replies, which again, a lot of the time are done already. Yeah. Uh, so I've got a lot of downtime. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna join that and uh, yeah, looking forward to joining that and finishing that and seeing how that goes. And obviously I'll keep you updated. But okay. you know, it, it's very much about like the the bit that I'm looking forward to is like the the lead gen side of things and see how he does the lead gen, see how because he always he's always talking about that 48% of uh, salesmen never make a second call. So if you, for example, say no, like yeah. how am I chasing that up? Or if for example you're sitting on the fence, how do we chase that up? Yeah. How do we convert those people and stuff like yeah. that? So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. I think that's going to be cool. Yeah, I think I think certainly in a in a sales sales perspective, like people ain't if people are inquiring, they're not saying you to as a not saying no to you as a brand, are they? Because they've obviously bought something or bought into the idea of what LRF represent. Do you know what I mean? So it may be circumstantial as to why potentially they didn't they didn't move forward in the first place, and potentially. Like, I mean, let's be fair, you don't, you don't, you, you say how it is. If you're ever in a position where you're talking to somebody and they're asking you the reality of prepping for a show, you ain't going to sugarcoat it. It's mm. fucking hard work. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that, that reality of, oh shit, maybe I'm not in a position. Like, and we, we've said before, like, no prep is smooth. So if you're in a position, and I only say prep because obviously that's what you specialize in, that's your yeah. thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, if somebody comes to you and even even as a conversation, like in the gym, they grab all of you and say, Oh, Rob, what do you think about this? And you say, mate, like, unless you've got your ducks in the line to a certain extent, unless you are willing to miss out on all of the family occasions, so I've got my mum's birthday in two months, don't start prep if you want to if you want to go. Because yeah. if you're going to be miserable and you're not going to go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, sure. it, it, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking forward to the the Salsy bit, the as I said, the lead gem bit, the like he's got a map, he's got I think, 78 videos on organization and structure. So making sure that obviously, like, you know, that the, the things flow and they flow in the right way. So, yeah, man, I'll keep you updated on that. I think that's going to be cool. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I yeah. think, uh, I think self development is unbelievable. Everyone should do it. Do some, do some kind of self improvement. 100%. Yeah. For sure. For sure. What you've been up to this week, anyway? Um, this week, smashing my spare bedrooms pieces. Raw coaching infrastructure also is uh, is changing. Getting desks set up here. Mads is Mads is flying at the moment with her girls. She's doing really really well. So we need to have an environment where we can fully go to work. Um, I think that's super super important. Like infrastructure changes that we've made at raw coaching, like even through like checking procedures, everything, literally start to finish. We've done a complete remodeling which is super super positive but obviously as a result we need to be in a position where we can actually drive that forward and be in an environment where we're doing that do you know what i mean yeah yeah for sure so like, yeah like, like i said to you I, i'm i'm not a fan of the the coffee shop side of things like because i i go to a coffee shop and you know susan's kids crying in the background <laughs> and, you know what i mean and margaret and janet are having a conversation about yeah. what last night and you know i just like for me, like I need to be in a really quiet environment. Even sometimes, like, like uh, if I'm sitting in the front room at, at doing some work, and Shah obviously puts like YouTube or something on, like I have to move out. Like I have to yeah. move away because I just like I'm drawn a little bit to that, and I like and then potentially I could miss something in the check-in. So yeah, yeah, I have to be in a really quiet environment myself. I don't, I don't know the statistic of how long how long it takes you to regain um, focus after it's lost. So like you're like working on check-ins. Like phones cannot be close mm. at all. Obviously, we've got WhatsApp, we've got WhatsApp on our on our uh, desktop and um, and laptop. But if you're in a position where your phone's going off and you turn to that, like to be able to regain focus, it takes it takes like a certain amount of seconds or minutes to be able to do yeah. that. I was listening to um, a Rob Dial um, podcast the other day, mm. and um, and he was talking about that and like distractions and being able to stay focused. So. Yeah, one hundred percent. You need to be in a. We need to be in a good environment. So, been doing that. Um, just been, just been clearing everything up. Really, I've contacted Gym Shop for a couple of pieces. Good. Yeah. Uh, HQ. Um, had a photo shoot at HQ on Sunday. So good, mate. Yeah. What, gym shop, what, what bits from Gym Shop are you looking at? Most of the explode stuff. So, um, I loved your, I loved your press in Herne Bay. Mm. The reclining. It, it's more of an incline press than it. That is. 
but yeah, I wanted that's nice because you can do that. You can do a forty-five, a fifty-five, a sixty-five, a seventy-five. Yeah, you get so many angles out of that. So I was going to get. So I've contacted him about that. Um, the flat explode press well, the Nautilus replica, yeah. um, and then the single arm lat row. Yeah. yeah. Um, which they've actually got available, so I'll be able to get that quick. And then the high row. They're like. To be fair, if I was if I was going to say what do you need, like you need a a lat, a lat dominant pull, then a lat yeah. dominant row, a flat press, and a and a shoulder press, or some kind of steep press, and you're good to go. Um, you got yourself a cable stack, and you're uh, you got yourself a gym. So yeah, so yeah. that's exciting. I think um, I think we're going to look at a glute drive for Mads as well, just to keep her happy. Christmas yeah. present. 2020. I think they might do them. You know, I think they might do glute drive. If not, then you will look at Nautilus. Actually, Nautilus glute drive not too bad. And, yeah. There's a Cutler one, which isn't too bad as well. Like there's a, a mate called Cutler. I'll send you. They do the hack as well. They're the people yeah. who do the nice hack as well. Like, yeah. I'll send you their details. But their their glute drives are reasonably really priced as well. I think it might might even be under a thousand pounds, and it's pretty Perfect. solid as well. To be fair, it's a decent one. We got one at LRF. Um, Perfect. So yeah, that, that's a nice glute drive as well. But I'll send you their details anyway. But yeah, no, yeah. those uh, explode bits are really good actually. To be fair, like the pull down is undeniable. The yeah. row, I, I just find loses a little bit of tension at the end, so you just have to sit really far forward on it. Like, yes, it's almost yeah. like the resistance profile just completely drops off at the end. Yeah. Um, so if you sit really far forward on it, it's actually a super movement. But if you sit, the reason that people like it at the gym is because they can sit back on it and put seven plates on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it, go, it goes back to the point of mo- oh, fucking hell, going through the science of it, movement movement patterns like elbow path. Well. To be fair, the further you lean back, the further your elbow is getting to your back anyway. So lean yeah. forward. Um, but we uh, maybe talk about that another time. Slag everyone's training approach off. Um, talk to me. How what how are you getting on with um, this week with peak week with your girls? Yeah, all right, man. I've actually at the first two bro show. I've actually only, I've got more boys than girls. Um, cool. I've got three men's physique lads. Um, yeah. All look spot on. To be fair, but I think like two of them are in the same class so yeah. i think it'll be a good battle between them um got one of the lads who won the overall last year called curtis uh beat yep. by, like ross dickinson and, and stuff yep. overall, really good lad actually looks good looks sharp uh i've got tom chenery who is uh who's on the bigger side of men's physique but he's yep. skilled and very aesthetic Yep. And I've got Tim. I don't know if you've seen Tim on my story, the black lad with a really small waist. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He looks waist. Awesome. Yeah, he looks absolutely mustard, to be fair. And okay. He's sharp. The only thing that he might lack is a little bit of top line muscle. That's the only thing he might lack is a little bit of top yep. line muscle. But he'll, if he don't turn pro this year, he'll have one good offseason and he'll be a pro. That's, that's actually yeah. so, yeah. yeah. that That genetic structure is... Very, very pleasing to look at. Certainly for that category, like his, yeah. his waist must be about ten inches. Absolute yeah. fucking liberty. I don't think I've ever had a waist that small. Yeah. Um, so, um, and it's, again, in terms of like that X frame flow from flow from through his back to his waist because he's got a small waist, but obviously yeah. from uh, from the from his upper body perspective, like flows really nicely. So yeah, no, nice yeah. To see him. and then two girls. I've got Liz Richardson. Um, so Liz is very good. X pro. Yeah, yeah, it's ex pro. So you've got Liz, and then I've got another uh, bikini girl called Nisra, who actually won his first time peaking her as well, who won the Ben Wheeler last year. But I think there was only two girls in her class, so she never yeah. had a great amount of competition last year. But she was actually five kilos lighter than what she competed at last year. Like she, she needed to be mm. leaner, uh, like she needed to be considerably leaner. Yeah. Um, and this is definitely her best look. So yeah, very happy with that. But yeah, I just like. It's all getting on well, to be honest. Like, I get them all ready really early. Like, in reality, if this show was two weeks ago, none of them would have had a problem either. Like, they were yeah. all been ready for two weeks. Um, I yeah. don't know if you, you try and do the same thing with your guys and girls. Do you know what? I, I've i had a massive change in opinion to how I, I'm i approaching, I'm uh, prepping guys moving forward. And girls, to be fair. And I know we've had a conversation about it before, keeping them in better, like keeping them in better shape in off season is a fucking must, but certainly being in a position. So Jack, for example, um, my, my classic guy for this, um, for PCA first timers, we, we push his weight up. So he's sat at 80 kilos. Now we push his weight up to 110. I think he was about 100, 111, call it. And what, what I actually did with him, I ran him through a cleanup phase, got 80% of the work done early rebuilt his calories rebuilt his food rebuilt him to a certain extent got him super super fresh took him off all of his gear and honestly mate he is he's taking 
literally fuck all. He runs 300, 300, test, um, 300 mega test a week, 300 mega primo. His, his, fat, his fat burners are null and void. He's got some thyroids in there for thyroid support throughout the board. Like, I, I don't I don't like to titrate that or run that. Yeah. Specifically, I think having that having that as a baseline all the way through is is vitally important. So that that way your thyroid production is consistent. Yeah. Um, and honestly, he's, he's coming like a dream, and he looks fresh as well, because we were in a position where we were able to freshen him up, got his bloods done before we actually dropped him into prep, and he's I think he prepped for thirteen weeks, had six weeks off between that cleanup phase, and it, it honestly worked a fucking dream. Mm-hmm. But I am now moving away from the whole just steps thing yeah i think for me mate and i don't i don't know how you i don't know how you feel about it but you've got to do some cardio man mm. well, like, I, I keep cardio in the around for people mate e- even if even if it's just 10 minutes like even if it's just 10 minutes because there's so many benefits yeah. to keeping that in the around not not just cardiovascularly obviously looking after your heart but yeah. just just in terms of a routine aspect as well like you know, you finish cardio, you're jumping a cross trainer. Yeah. If all of a sudden you've got a start prep and now you're starting to jump on a cross trainer, it almost seems like a task. Oh, fuck yeah. Up. That I know prep started now because I've got to <laughs> you know Welcome I mean? to the stairmaster. Yeah, but it, but if you've kept that in year round, it's right, it, it's routine. Right? I finished my session, I finished my EAAs or whatever I'm drinking during my pre, of course, complete strength. But you know, you jump on that, you jump on a cross trainer, and it's just routine then for you. Yeah. It just becomes part and parcel of your training session. Like yeah. Look, unless somebody is like a metabolic freak and they are like churning through calories like nothing, yeah. like 99% of the clients that I have will stay on some form of cardio year round, as I said, because because of cardiovascular benefits, because of routine benefits, just because of the fact that you'll be fitter in your sessions as well. Yeah. That's cardiovascular yeah. benefits. But yeah. you, know, you, ain't, you ain't blowing when you get to rep six yeah and you're failing because you're out of breath you're failing because your muscles are failed so yeah man i've always been a fan of that so so no i mean that's that's something that i think like for like last like last year with my prep for example like i did cardio for the first for three four weeks got a got a decent amount of weight off and then it got pulled straight away now the problem is it's such a it like like with anything and same same thing with peak week no matter how you when you are prepping people you run on a needs basis standpoint, don't you? So obviously, all right, well, we need to lose half a kilo a week, what, whatever it is to get to your stage rate. Okay, how are we going to do that? What have we got? Well, we got food, we got drugs, we got expenditure, and whatever else. Let's say those three as a those three as a whole. Okay, well, what's what's going to get you there? All three will, some sort of manipulation and change. What's going to cause the most amount of stress and potentially diminish and make the look worse rather than better? All right. Well, if I'm not doing any cardio, how am I going to burn fat? How how am I going to create that calorie deficit? Well, I could I could eat fuck all, but if I'm 120 kilos and I want to stand on a super stage, probably not a good idea because I'm going to waste away. So, what do you have to drive? Drugs. What does that do? Maximizes stress. Do you know what I mean? So, for me, I think even even big guys. All right. Okay. You're not going to see somebody like Nathan Diasher on doing sprints at six o'clock in the morning before he starts his day. But like maybe jumping on maybe jumping on a bike, cross trainer, stairmaster, and doing us uh, doing a decent amount of his calorie deficit mm. on that may mean that he can pull back on other areas. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent, man. Again, you look you look at the like obviously nowadays there's so much going on with with social media. Like you can see a lot of the guys are doing cardio. A lot of the yes. guys are on the tra- and and it, and it might not be it might not be intensive cardio. It might be that they're on the treadmill. But they're 120 kilos or they're 130 kilos. Yep. Then being on the treadmill at the incline five is the equivalent of you at 80 kilos being on the treadmill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because that's, that, that's their expenditure, you know, because they're so big, they're so heavy. And potentially they can't use the stairs because it will ruin their knees at that size and so on and so forth. So, yeah, man, like, like cardio is a tool that I, I use like year round with people. And I think it's a, it's a great tool, man. And, you know, and by saying that, you know, it's like someone that lives, for example, she hasn't done cardio for four weeks. Like she has like any cardio for four weeks. Um, so she she's an anomaly and she knows she's an anomaly. Like she's eating 550 grams of carbs. She's 60, like she's under 60 kilos. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that, that that's an anomaly. But someone like Nissa, for example, who's weighing 52 kilos, like we, I think we only had to push her cardio up to like 35 minutes. But again, as well, you know that I'm, I'm a big fan of never getting too heavy in the off season anyway. So we don't ever have to drive 
cardio up too high. So, yeah, yeah so the, all, all their peaks are going well, to be honest. But there hasn't been any real anomalies. Uh, Curtis's weight is a little bit up and down because he's doing some early mornings at work, like he's doing some four o'clock starts, and yep. that, that will hopefully knock on the head. But yeah, for anybody who is doing those sort of early shifts, your weight's always going to rise when you wake up early because yep. you've had a, you've had a shorter period of time where you've um, where you've not drunk and you've not eaten. If you eat always your last meal at eight o'clock and you wake up at four, then you've only then had eight hours where you've not drunk or eaten. Now yep. you wake up at six, you've had ten hours there where yep. you've not eaten or not drunk. So naturally your weight's going to be a bit lower. So yeah, yeah apart, apart from him, his weight rising up and down a little bit, like all of them have been pretty smooth actually, to be honest. They've been pretty smooth sailing with their prep. I think it's just, I think it's just about number one, being ready. Like we, we've, we've said time and time again, how it's, it's not a magic week. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Any, anybody that really needs to th pull some show stoppers out of like voodoo magic. I'll tell you what, we're going to do this. and We're going to do that. Like, you probably haven't got enough of the work done or all of the work done before before you start. And it's a yeah. dream. And like Jack in all fairness, obviously these are first time competitors, so they don't know what to expect. And and you get and you get the whole comment, which which I love is how am I eating more food and losing weight? Like, welcome to dropping stress off. Do you know what I mean? Like this is what happens. Um and um and and it's and it's interesting and it's and it's funny and it, it it's actually quite rewarding, I think. So when when you work with guys who have done this for years and years and years, you work with when you work with experienced guys, even they, even they sometimes like I took Cal to the British last year um and he won and he smashed it. But even running some protocols with him, like he'd competed before, and he was like, like what what we do? Like, why aren't I doing more? Do you know what I mean? Um, do doing less, and you're like looking better, and it's and it's alien to people, but I think that is it's not a magic week. Like you're not in a position if you aren't if you aren't ready, you like you can't peak fat. No. Do you know what I mean? Like you can't. So if you're in a position where you've got the job done, you can actually really, really enjoy it. But you've got to have a bit of a dig. You've either got to be in a position where you're ready before you prep, you're sensible, you have a good productive off season, so you can actually bring yourself in 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 an enjoyable manner. Nothing being being fucking lean is hard, like regardless. But it makes it a little bit easier when you can eat 550 grams of carbs mm -hmm. as opposed to eat no carbs. Do you know yeah. what I mean? No, for sure. And, and I think, like I said, I think like I think that peak week hopefully would one day not become peak week anymore. I, like, I think that name should be changed to something yeah. else. Like mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I, I can't think of a better name right now. But you know, nice. just moving that that moving that away because again, it just has this like right. I'm going to peak for this one moment in time, and of course, that's what the goal is. But that peaking actually has taken 16 weeks to do, you know, I mean, it's taken 16 weeks to do. So, you know, if you've got them 16 weeks wrong, then that peaking ain't never going to take place because it's all done prior to that. So I mean, yeah. again, it comes down, it comes down to the point of having preset variables, knowing what they are. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So if you are going to make any manipulations, you know what manipulations you're making, you know why, why you're making them and what the results are going to be off the back of it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I think, it's it's the same it's the same thing in it. Like if I was to if I was to outline Jack's peak week for this week, like what's changing? Okay, he's an assisted athlete, so there's going to be some manipulations there. There has to be. Um, but from a from a dietary perspective, like nutrient specific, like it's food groups. They're not changing. No. Do you know what I mean? Like he's, he's still drinking water. Like he's still having his 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 um his supplementation every day. Um, CS of course. Let's see us raw for this one. Um, it, like nothing changes. Do you know what I mean? Even to a certain extent, training. Like, am I cut, am I cutting? He's training. He's training legs today. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Very, 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 very minimally. Mm. Like small print. But yeah. why wouldn't he? Because he woke up on Sunday ready to go. Yeah. I I would have been happy sending him in. All right, flat to play here. He's eighty kilos. He needs more fucking food. But apart from that. Like you should be able to wake up and get rocking and rolling. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. You know what I mean? Training, e even to me, like training. Actually, I only, for example, the girls and guys that are competing on Saturday, only their last two sessions, which are Friday, the Thursday and Friday, are lighter sessions. Until yeah. that point, they're just training normally. They just train normally yeah. until that point. So all I do is I to just pull down the the volume of the session. So in the early bit of the week, for example, rather than doing two sets of failure, they'll do one set of failure and then almost like a deload set 
for the second set. Yes. But they're still yeah. frame heavy. If they're, if they're doing 70 aside on the press, guess what they're doing this week? 70 aside on the press. You know, all yeah. I'm trying not to do is one, try and progress that lift in this final week. Yeah. And two, as I said, that second set where they might do 55 for 10, I might just say do 55 for eight. Just yeah. so they're not really, again, pushing overly hard in that second set. But the first yeah. set, they're still working hard, working to failure. Most of them will have a rest day on Wednesday, Thursday, depending if they're competing Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. And then they'll do a last couple of pump-up sessions. Yeah. Um, but but they're, like, they're all, there's a couple of things that do change for me. Like I'll push water up a little bit. But again, yeah. it, most athletes would drink a decent amount of water anyway. And like yes. I've got one guy who drinks eight litres a day naturally. So all I've done is taken that from eight to nine to ten. So it's yeah. only an increase of 25% across the yeah. week. And then I'll just pull that down, not out, but down. Yeah. Yeah. On, on the day before the show um, and the girls for example the girls again might only be drinking four liters I think one of them is drinking four so they'll go from four to four and a half four and a half to five five and a half to six six and a half to seven so it's just a, like a half a liter increase every single day yeah. coffees are still in green yeah. teas are still in um, I do pull out fizzy drinks sort of midweek yeah. um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't rate them anyway mate to be honest yeah. but yeah uh, any sort of fizzy drink if they're having maybe coke or something like that like a diet coke but yeah, I might pull that out midweek. Skinny yeah. sauces, I fucking hate them, but they go. <laughs> yeah, but they, they just they just ruin people's digestion, mate. Like, they, right. yeah, they just absolutely ruin people's digestion. So they go a couple of weeks out if they're using them sparingly. Um, I'm just trying to think what else goes on that sheet that I sent out to him. Um, steps come down again, but like not not drastically, but they might go from like twelve to eleven to ten to nine to eight. But yep. even on the day of the show, I, I still actually get people to walk around after their food. Like, and again, yeah. oh, like people think, oh, well, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm going to lose the lines in my legs. If you eat a meal and then you do a five minute walk, you'll be absolutely fine. If you yeah. don't go for that walk, you'll eat that meal and it will just sit on your stomach. It will yep. sit on your stomach. So, again, one of the things, even on show day, even on show day, I will still get the guys and girls to eat their food and then just go for a little walk. Like, yeah. like people are looking at you like you're crazy because you're walking around with their yeah. laying down with their legs up and I'm saying to them, listen, you have to go and move that food around. Yeah. Especially on the day of the show because you're stressed, you're nervous, all of these things which are gonna fuck your digestion. Yeah. Why don't you do something which is gonna aid your digestion and yeah. go out for a little bit of a walk as well once you eat that meal? So That's yeah, again, like not a great deal of changes for me in these final weeks. They're they're ready and they just sort of it's we're just moving the needle forward very, very slowly to then getting them even more ready. So rather yeah. than like, as I said, I don't like to use the word peaking them, but just getting them more and more ready for the show. So Yeah, I think, I think it, again, it all, it all comes down to that predetermined expectation um, or ex experience of, okay, like re realistically, if you've had somebody for long enough, if you're lucky enough to have somebody for long enough, you would, you would have ran them through a deload before. You would have, you would have accumulated an enormous amount of fatigue through a training block and being in a position where you can say, do you know what? You've hit a fucking wall now. You know what that looks like visually, regardless of whether they're in off season or not, you know how they respond. You also know how long they take to freshen up. So if you're in a position, I know this is probably a little bit more specific to the individual, but if you're in a position where you've got a, a male and you know they train hard as fuck and you know that they can actually wear it, again, like you can send them into the gym and say, do you know what? I know that when you when we run a deload, we half your volume, you still train hard as fuck, but we we half your volume and you just wake up. So yeah. let's just do that because we're gonna we're gonna make some adjustments to your expenditure, we're gonna give you more food, you're gonna freshen up anyway, and you'll be like, you'll be fucking ridiculous. Yeah. And and and, and we're helping that food move around as well. You know, we're helping that food move around. So when you are pushing a little bit of extra food, and again, as well, I'll talk about like carbs and that which, which the girls use and the guys use, but like me, I'm not a big heavy carb loader, but you know, when I'm gra gradually pushing that food up, for example, like I still want you training hard. I, I don't want you yeah. going in and training like a pussy because yeah. then that food's just not going to be able to move around. It's not going to be able to fill up the glycogen stores yeah. as, as much yeah. as we want. So, yeah. yeah so, so for me, like again, like I, I'm, like I said, I'm not a big heavy carb loader. Like the guys will probably, like the guys, I think the biggest guy I've got doing that show is 86 kilos. Um, and I think he'll probably end up on around about 500 grams of carbs a day. Today yeah. he does 415. I'll go away, have a look at what he looks like. If his weight holds, I'll push up to five. But yeah. you know, I'm I'm not a big heavy carb loader whatsoever. I don't know if you've done heavy ever done like these big heavy carb loads before. Do you know do you know what? Like, and again, this comes from my experience as an athlete as well. Like, and that's and that's like 
but you learn you learn on the job by by doing this whether you, whether you're a competitive athlete yourself whether you're a coach with a number of different athletes like you've got to make a call and it's your job to make calls what you get paid for so i've ran i've ran guys on depletion weeks that were actually ready like just just through experience like that's my experience that's what i've done without even being coached do you know what i mean like i've ran I've ran no carbs till two days before the show and I've just fucking eaten. And is that enough? No. Do you know what I mean? Even, even with somebody at between 80 and 90 kilos, forget about the 100 kilo mark, but that's a lot of body to fill. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And you can't expect to do that in 24 hours. No. Do you know what I mean? Over what? 12 meals or yeah. two, two days over 12 meals. Like It's not enough. It's not, it's not enough time to actually be able to manage that process either. So, yeah, we, like I, d- I don't think there is anything, and I'm sure there probably will be over my over my time of continuing to take clients to shows, and again having to having those curveballs that always come. And you, and you're right, things like stress, just like you can look at you can look at somebody the day before a show and be like, mate, on, don't mm-hmm. change a si- single fucking thing. Yeah. Send you a check in at five six o'clock in the morning. You're like, what the fuck happened? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Have you been have you been doing the whole like dominoes pre-show thing that every other <laughs> bell end does? Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I think I think for me, like most importantly, if they're ready, they're ready. Like you you have you have always you've always preached this to me. And again, it's that percentage increase and in betterment, I think, more than anything else. So providing you know that you can wash off as much fatigue as possibly needed, or that you possibly can, and you and you do that then the physique's going to wake up anyway. Drip feed some food in throughout the week, if, if even necessary. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then you're good to go. Like I, now, more, more than ever before, I think less, I think less is more. Um, but, but again, with, with Cal, for example, for the British, I mean, he, I think I pushed, I, I started peaking in Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, and I must have pushed four three to four thousand grams of carbs in him over that time frame yeah. um which isn't an enormous amount but he needed it mm. do you know what i mean so it's, it's a it's a it's a hard one to call but i think less is more 100 yeah, yeah for sure that, so y- yesterday tom who's probably the biggest out of three he done 350 weight held did 415 today i think weight will probably hold because i know his body now and yeah. then if it does hold i'll do 500 so over that yeah. three-day period we've done like 1200 and we've still got three days before the show so yeah we can push hard if we need to but yeah i, like, I completely agree like the, the smaller the changes that you have to make it sort of just shows how ready that person is so yeah. if for example your coach ain't making a great deal of change that's not a problem it, it sort of no. shows you're ready they, they know that they can ease you in and almost just drop you on stage and you'll be absolutely fine yeah yeah i think i think people People are a little bit overkill with it, and maybe it is the maybe it is the word peak week. I suppose maybe maybe it is that term, and it's just like, well, something has to be done to to make to level me up. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But it's I think it's massively overkill and feeling the need to be overly technical as well. Mm. I mean, like I won't even go into fucking diuretics and all that shit. Like it's but it's funny how all of these things are starting to actually move back away from bodybuilding. I'm finding. Yeah. Um, like they they were massively prominent even even a couple of years ago, but like I did I haven't I haven't prepped anybody on on diuretics. Like I, no, I I, I, to be honest, I still use a little bit of aldactone. I will still occasionally yeah. use a little bit of aldactone for the boys. Yeah. Um, just because I do I do find it can give you that harder drier look. And mm-hmm. but the thing is, with with all diuretics, there is a a point where it just it creates diminishing returns. And again, it's just like anything, like here, less is more. Like for example, the most diuretic that I used last year was 12.5 aldactone, which yeah. is like literally fucking nothing. Like, you know, yeah. it's just enough to crisp them up. And again, you've got guys who are, you know, blasting aldactone, blasting diazide, blasting these drugs. And, yeah. it's just, and all, if anything, it just makes people's physique look worse and worse and worse and yeah. worse. And yeah. As I said, well, it just, I think I think the thing is is it's a very very fine line and and I like I agree I had um, I had Nick in two bros for for classic I beat I beat someone out that time um, that was three three seasons ago um, but it but it it works but providing it works do you know what I mean yeah. and you are and you are in a, you are on a very fine line then you're in a position listen 
like if you're in a position where you know your athlete and you know what you're doing, uh, you're absolutely fine. But I think for people rolling up to shows with athletes that don't really know what these things do, um, and also don't know the 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 effects if it goes the wrong way. Oh, great! I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll run 100, 100 mega mile data zone over this period of time. It's just like like I hope I hope it goes well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, sure. I, I, you, you would have seen it as well. People pass out of the shows and yeah. backstage and people do all sorts of crazy stuff. And, you know, a, a lot of that time, a lot of the time when they're passing out and they're seeing stars, it, it's through dehydration yeah. more than anything else. It's just through solely through dehydration that, yeah. you know, that coach is probably pumping out that zone is also probably cutting your water to zero as well, yeah. you know, because they think that's the way that you have to peak. But obviously yeah. that's... That's probably the complete opposite to the way that you have to peak, but yeah. you know, yeah. So, so water is one of the things that I do push up a little bit, and I do gradually just phase it in, phase it in, phase it in. Yeah. And then I think, you know, for example, I think I, I write out like a rough plan for the guys and girls. Yeah. And I think the lowest anybody will take their water on show day is about two liters. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just trickling in that water just on the day of the show again, just to keep them nice and full again to aid that digestion. The last thing that yeah. you want to do is go on stage and your midsection's been nice and tight this whole prep. You sit there, you eat your food, you lay down, you don't do any movement, you don't drink any water, that food is just going to sit on your stomach. And that nice tight midsection that you had has now disappeared, which is, yeah. which is like, you know, for the bikini class, which is one of the most popular classes that we do, it is, it's got to be one of the pivotal points. That nice tight midsection has got to be the most pivotal point. And you know, touch wood, lucky enough that all of the LRS girls, when they get on stage, they have a nice tight flat midsection. That's obviously why they do so well. But yeah, we, we do so many different things like go and walk on the day of the show, drink water, you know, keep food sources the same. Like I, last year, I hear people just doing no carb on the day of the show and like not eating on the day of the show. Like, yeah. you know, uh, like it just, yeah, it just sort of, it just dumped my head in a little bit. And these are from educated coaches as well. And, you know, Charles yeah. will speak to the girls and the girls, but they speak to the girls and be like, Oh, so it's just at 30 grams of chicken today and it's like four o'clock in the afternoon and you're just fuck me like what are you doing like it's absolutely yeah. crazy to see that yeah, um, yeah no it, like, again especially the midsection thing as well because guys as well midsection so scrutinized these days girls midsection so scrutinized and again you see so many people get on stage and they're a little bit bloated or they, you know they, they've just not been able to digest that food and again it's a lot of the time because they, they'll cut water and then they'll just sit there all day and you, you yeah. see it all the time with bodybuilder shows yeah. Bodybuilders just sat in the corner all day eating, eating, eating. They get on stage and their belly's so bloated. You just, yeah. you just, you've done something wrong here, mate. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no benefit to it because what do you need? Do you know what I mean? You're, you've got zero fat. You need some intramuscular swelling, don't you? Like you yeah, need yeah. that. Um, and and I think I think it's I think it's interesting you go into that because that's that unstimulated muscle is a flat like untouched muscle like it look it it looks shit like you can't fuel it it's another reason why i told told jackie needs strain legs this week because mm. i said like like your, le- your legs your legs need me to be continue to wake up otherwise we're going to bet you in a position where we, we're continuing to fuel you but nothing's happening same reason i think i i'm massively moved back over to training abs like consistently like it's a muscle like okay great you talk about like thickening of the abs as a whole thickening of the waist. Well, I think it's bollocks because I've never seen anybody that nails ab work on a regular basis, turn up to a show and have shit midsection. No. Like solid, rock solid, carved to, carved to shreds. I can almost guarantee you guys this weekend that like they would have trained abs in their off season or maybe like once or twice a week. No word of a lie, they'll be dry as fuck through midsection. Why? Because it's a muscle that's consistently stimulated. So it requires nutrient delivery. Do you know what I mean? Nutrient uptake has to be optimized. So you're in a position where you you need to be in a position where your muscles are asking for that, right? Hundred yeah, percent. Like um, yeah, that's a great point because I, I actually get the girls to train glutes, for example, three yeah. times this week. Very, very light, very, very light. So yeah. for example, they would have trained glutes on a Monday, they'll train glutes again today, which is uh, what's today? No, sorry, they would have trained glutes Sunday, they would have trained glutes today, which is Tuesday, they would do a glute pump on a Thursday as well, and then they'll compete on a Saturday. Yep. But it is very much like a pump. It's only like three sets of uh, abductor uh, and then three sets of glute drive, all sub-maximal. But again, it's stimulating that muscle. It's it's giving the body a sign, send nutrients here, uh, yep. which, is, which is so important. So again, yeah, I, I get all the girls to do that glute pump as well, just as they're going into the show to keep those glutes nice and round and nice and full. And I yep. think it definitely does help for sure. Yeah, yeah, I, I, 
I do massively. And I, and I think that's why you see that sort of un, underwhelming pop on a lot of people. And it, and it is, it's a, it's a combination, isn't it? Like zero water, mm. shit, shit load, shit load of food that you probably don't eat. And like, you literally see people like flat, flatten out and get softer throughout the day of the show, let, let alone like throughout peak week. Um, so I, I think, I think again, like any, any advice that I would give to anybody would be if it's working, like if it's not broken, don't fix it. Yeah. Like if you, if you are ready a week out, if you can wake up on Sunday, Saturday or Sunday morning, the week before your show and you can check in and you can be dry as a fucking bone. All right, flat, but you are fucking lean. Like don't change. Like if you were doing it on your own, don't change anything. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, do you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. it's, as, it's as simple as that. Otherwise, it's a waste. And that, that's the biggest thing for me, I think. Over, even over times that I, like, I prepped myself and I went through ridiculous, like, no car protocols, because I thought it was easy. Like, I had such a false sense of reality when I first started competing. I prepped for, like, I did, like, cardio for, like, two weeks and rocked up to Miami Pro and then won everything. I was just like, this is fucking dust, mate. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm going to be pro next week. Um, and when you get into the nitty gritty, it's, it's a completely different reality. But like don't don't overkill it if if what you've been doing so far is working do that otherwise just hire somebody who knows what they're fucking doing do you know what i mean and take that stress and pressure off yourself i would never prep myself to be honest with you you know same as what i say to young coaches like if for example a young coach doesn't really know what they're doing in peak week peak week then they keep it the same keep it the same like don't worry about don't worry about well this person is doing fat loading and this person is doing carb loading and this person is you know, using insulin and this person is using a diuretic, like... And he's having a bottle of wine before the show. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, they're having wine before the show. Just don't worry about it. Like, you know, if you're a young coach who is thinking, shit, man, I don't really know how to peak this person, just keep doing what you're doing. As long as they look good, then just keep doing what you're doing. You'd rather them look 99% on point than 100% fucked. Um, Because as soon as you cross that line, generally, one day out or on the day of the show, there's no coming back from that. No. Like, I've seen a couple of people save it when they've spilled over and been like, yeah, you know what, you pulled that back. But that's very few out of all the years I've been doing it. Very few people have ever done that. I think, I think there's a massive genetic question there as well. Like if you're someone who can get away with, like if, if you're lean, you're lean. Like, and you ain't going to get fat over a day. But if you spill, like you're, you're, in, you're in uncharted territory and you, you are literally depending on sheer ability poor competition potentially to even come through but you're not you're not winning at the best you so i just think like now more than ever i'm just like why over complicate it yeah no, sure. it's, same as the meal the night before the show i remember i had this conversation with somebody a couple of weeks ago they said you know will will i go out for a pizza or something the night before the show i said absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because well, well one like worst case scenario this this will be the worst case scenario is you go for a pizza and you wake up the next day and you look wicked and you win that show. Yeah. And then you think that's the theory. This is the worst case scenario. That's the theory that I need. Next time I compete, I'm going to do the same thing. You go to the same pizzeria, there's a different guy on the grill. He puts yeah. less cheese, he puts less tomatoes, he puts less ham, whatever you might have on your pizza. You wake up the next day and you think, shit, I don't look the same anymore. Because <laughs> the variables you can't control. You cannot control what the server is putting on that plate. You, you might get burger and chips and one day you might go to five guys and your chips you know at five guys sometimes those chips are massive you've got yeah. like seven portions of chips yeah. you get <laughs> yeah. and then the next week you go there's a stingy bastard who only yeah. gives you half the chips yeah. so again you're just and that, that's best case scenario sorry that that that, that is the, the the worst case scenario that could happen like that you go there and you just like you look great you win the show and you think that is the protocol for me that yeah. is what I need to do yeah. you know and yeah, and, and you just you try that again and it messes up and you just don't understand why it messes up. At least it's, a false, can, it's a false reality. Right. Yeah, 100%. Because you've got no control. But at least if, if I peak you for the show and you wake up and, okay, you are a little bit flat, then I know, right, well, yesterday I fed you 500 grams of carbs. Next time we're going to feed you 600 and we're going to yeah. see where that works. Yeah. We, we gave you X amount of fat. We, we dropped off this that time. We can push it on again next time. You can measure all of that stuff. You know, yeah. if you go in and you just eat something from a restaurant or you have a pizza or you have a burger and chips there's no control over you actually consuming the food that you want to consume i need to consume 700 grams of chips well 
great. Next time you consume 700 as well, but the guy was putting on the salt on those chips, put half the amount of salt on this time. So even though you think you're controlling, oh, well, actually I'm controlling it because I'm measuring it out, you ain't controlling all of those aspects. No, no. And it's, it's, I, th I think there's always a question of white line fever as well. Like, I'm, I'm so close to the finish line, I could do it now. That I, I don't like. I don't agree with the whole like. Maybe it's maybe it's a trust thing. To be fair, but like you give somebody who, who you have prepped for 12, 16, 20 weeks, and you say right, go and go and get yourself a cookie. Like, really? What you you gonna you're gonna allow them to do that? Because I think I think give them an inch, potentially take a mile, and unfortunately, like the reality is that I I've like, I've seen it being done. Do you know? What I mean, when people probably take the piss a little bit too much, even, even with anything, to be fair, like, oh, too, too much, too much information or, or too much trust can potentially lead to, no, this is, this is the rigid approach. You're there now. You've done 16 weeks worth of work to get here. You've, you've been in off season for 12 months. So you've done everything you possibly need to. Now you really need to fucking close this off mm -hmm. as a professional. Do you know what I mean? Don't get overexcited. Like I don't, I don't agree with like the junk drawers and shit. Like, and I don't know, how, I don't know how these people survive through prep with having having like fucking hundred quid's worth of chocolate in the drawer. Yeah. Like, I'm thinking, are you mad? Mm -hmm. And it, but again, like you 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 give them an inch. Right, we're gonna we're gonna run twelve and a half twelve and a half milligrams of of aldactone. Well, they've got a little bit of an inkling about what that does. So they think, well, maybe if I take 25 and a whole tablet, yeah. I'm going to be in a position where I'll be even drier. And yeah. Rob will be well happy when I wake up in the morning. He'll be like, you're a fucking idiot. Why did you double the dose? And you know what you're looking at? Because you know what you're expecting. Because you know the yeah. athlete. Do you know what I mean? For sure. And, you know, there was an interesting conversation that I had on the, the prep course. So, so there's on the prep course, there's only five people this time because I wanted to keep yeah. it really close. And yeah. three of them are IFBB pros. So... That we, we all spoke about because we'd all competed. I said that the pressure of being backstage and seeing yeah. somebody pump up from two hours before, and you think, Shit, right. should I be doing that? Should, should yeah. I be doing that? I, should I be the fuck me, that person over there eating a Mars bar? Should I be doing that? And all mm -hmm. of a sudden, you've got these little treats in your bag, and fuck me, you start, it, and you know what it's like backstage as well. A lot of the time, there's no reception backstage. No. So you message your coach, if the message doesn't go through, yeah. Or, for example, the coach is watching another athlete or whatever, yeah. they're driving to your show, they can't text you back, and you don't get a response for 10 minutes. And you see that person across the road eating a Mars bar, you reach into your bag and you start eating your cookie. Yeah. You think, shit, like everybody else is doing it, so I should be doing it. As yeah, well. yeah, yeah. You know, and, and one of the biggest pieces of advice that I actually gave the guys and girls on the prep course was to not, not let your athletes go backstage too early. Yes. Because backstage, really? although, like, we see Instagram, the niceties, all the girls cuddling, all the guys giving themselves fist pumps. <laughs> yeah. What also is happening is that person is saying, I can't fucking wait to smoke you on stage. 100%. I can't wait to fucking smoke you. So I'm going to do as much as I can to put you off of your protocol. Yeah, yeah. Make your trunks a little bit loose at the back. Yeah, yeah. So whatever yeah. that might be, you know. Yeah. I, mean, you know I see it happen all the fucking time. I've been backstage enough to know what people were saying and people were doing, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, it, like I always tell people as well, one of the tips that I do is, is try and avoid going backstage too early because you, yep. all, all you're going to do there is see people doing things potentially that they shouldn't be doing, i.e., again, pumping up for fucking two hours, yep. eating their chocolate bars, um, like getting sweets and Harry Bows. Like when Shah went to the show in Jersey, she said that they were literally eating Biscoff out the jar. Like getting fucking spoons of Biscoff and just eating it out the chart. It hurts me. It like fucking he hurts weren't me. fucking measuring it out. He was yeah, yeah. To have a big spoonful here and he was fucking feeding it to them as well. And, you know, again, I've seen that happen so many times yeah. at the shows and people just randomly just stuffing food down themselves. They're taking yeah. pre workout an hour and a half before because yeah. they don't know the running orders and stuff like that. So, again, it, you know, by going backstage, you almost put, chuck yourself into the fire. Yeah. So you want to be in that fire as the smallest amount of time possible because you'll, again, you'll see someone who you know is competing at the show, you've seen them on Instagram, they don't know the right running order, they don't know the open is after a novice, junior, da -da -da -da. they see bikini starting and they're just like, take my free workout now, but they're in open yeah. class fucking G. You know I mean? <laughs> They've got two hours still to wait. Yeah. You, know what I mean? yeah. you see all of that happening and it's just, yeah, it's just crazy, man. So I always try and get people to stay away from backstage for as long as possible every time no I, th I think i think it's massively important you're right 
and you see, you see things. I, you know what? The first time I was thinking about that the other day, the first time I met you was at um, PCA Hampshire, wasn't it? That yeah, 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 yeah. So I, mean, I remember that day well. Have you got it written in your? I actually have. No, I was rereading my diary, and I was like, <laughs> Mr. LRF, such a beautiful man. Um, so I, um, like, I, I remember that like it was yesterday, and no word of a lie, I turned, I turned up to the show, walked in, registered. Came out of the show, sat on them steps where I met you. Um, you look so beautiful, and yeah, um, and I li- and I literally hung around outside until I'd probably hear them calling my name. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Because I, because I don't I don't like the whole like pre celebration. I'm not about that. Um, as as a competitive athlete myself, and as a as a coach, as anybody, I believe of staying in my lane until the job is done. Mm. I don't want to photo with you backstage. But I get so many people asking me all the time, Cor, can I have a photo with um but no, but, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want to do that. And I and I do say I do say to my guys and girls, say to anybody, like the biggest piece of advice, like stay in your lane until the job is done. Don't pre-celebrate, don't fucking don't look and think about what anyone else is doing. May seem a bit shitty, but are you gonna be are you gonna be up for a photo when you come second to the person you're chatting shit with? And having photos with, and not focusing on your own protocol because you're too busy helping him put his fucking bikini on. Do you know what I mean? And and doing some shine on his ass. Stop. Like, stay away from him. Stay away from her. Do your own fucking thing until you've won, and then you can have as much photos as you want. Yeah. But I guarantee you, the person who you're avoiding speaking to, if you beat them, they won't be that interested in speaking to you after the show. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah for sure. No, absolutely. I, I think. Like I said, I, I think people see the backstage and they think, oh my God, that's so cool. And da, 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 da. and it's like, for example, like it's fine if, for example, you've got five or six people from your team competing because they can yeah. go into a corner and, you know, be, yeah. be on their yeah. own. But again, as well, like if you don't know them people, that's an awkward situation to be in. It's a bit weird. Like yeah. Your prep might be a bit different to theirs. And again, like people are going to talk about prep backstage and you say, well, Rob, give me 50 grams of cream of rice today and you say oh he only gave me 35 <laughs> you know, I, I, I must be doing something wrong why have yeah. i only got 35 when you got 50 like am yeah. i am i flat am i you know what i mean and all of this starts going through your mind so yeah like like, like i think that's ideal is to come away sit down and half the time if for example if i don't have someone competing at a show i'm generally in the coffee shop or something like yeah. just chilling and i'll always tell the guy just come out and chill out, chill out here just come out yeah. chill out here you know what I mean? yeah. relax we'll, we'll sit down we'll or we'll talk about life, we'll talk about shit, you know what I mean? Especially when I can talk for England as well. Like I can just yeah. we can just rattle off any sort of yeah. conversation that will get the time going. And oh, all of a sudden, oh, you can go back stage yeah. now. You yeah. know what I mean? And get yourself glazed and stuff like that. So yeah, like personally, I always avoid sending people backstage too early. That's another little thing that I always say to people is don't go back there too early. Yeah. yeah. I think it's um I think it's I think I think it's the best way to do it personally. Um I'm not I'm not I'm not down for pre-celebration. I hate that. Um once, once the job's done, celebrate then. Until then, like tunnel vision, focus on what you're doing. Um, I, I also, it's funny you say that actually, like last last year's first timers, I had the most athletes I've ever taken to a show. And they're all they're all coming to my Airbnb, just around the corner of the venue. They're all stood in front of me. I'm like, and um, you've got to have answers to these people. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're like, right, you, well, you fucking prepped me from behind your phone, you little keyboard warrior. Now what are we doing? Do you know what I mean? I've got no no time to prepare. So I'm like, right, who's yours? And, um, and I'm like, right, you're doing that. Fuck off. You're doing that. Fuck off. And I'm like, and they and they, and they they are asking. They're like, really? Well, what what am I doing differently to what she's doing? And what he, what's he doing? And it's like, so yeah, 100%. I think, um, I think, I think we're all good. I, I, I detest personally. I'm, I'm not sure you, you didn't go to the graftism. So at the graftism, Joe Ballinger took a picture of me, literally like sat in the corner. There was nobody around me at all. I had my headphones in, like I wasn't speaking to anybody. I think I was like napping. Do you know what I mean? Because I was just so uninterested. And I don't like, um, like, I'm a massive, I've got a massive thing about my environment. Like I try and protect it as much as possible. That's why I'm like a little bit, um, a little bit weird. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I, I get I get really I get really weirded out about like having negative conversations. Do you know what I mean? So I don't want to sit there five minutes before I'm about to go and stand on stage. A, 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 something that I've prepared for for an enormous amount of time, put my heart heart into, blood, sweat, and tears, and then somebody say, "Oh, that fucking prep was hard work, wasn't it?" 
Like, was your, I was like, mate, I'm not having this conversation with you. <laughs> so I mean, like, I'm here to enjoy it now. I don't want to have a neggy conversation. So I mean, oh, my, my fucking coach was well pissed off. He told me to have one cookie and I had three. I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, Thanks. I, I agree, man. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's a strange environment backstage, man. It's a strange environment. And the thing is, I'll, I've never competed with a mate. Like, I've never, like, it, in the five years that I competed, I never competed with a friend. Mm -hmm. So I never actually, like, obviously, I went with partners and parents and stuff like that, but I never competed with a friend. So it, it might be different if you actually sat with a friend and competed with a friend and chilling with your yeah. friend. And then I think it would be fine to go backstage. But during that whole time I competed for five years, I've never, I never actually competed against one of my mates or with one of my mates. It was always very much like, especially back then, because bodybuilding weren't cool back then. Like, you would only You couldn't get 100 likes on Instagram then, could you? So it was a waste of time. Yeah, Instagram wasn't even going then, man. I didn't <laughs> have Instagram back then. So, yeah, that's how fucking ancient it was. Well, I, I remember it was, it was Facebook, actually, back then, like 2000 and... 11, which was my first show, is what was Facebook. It was all on Facebook. Love that. Yeah, man. But no, hopefully people have found it that it's useful for, for peaks. As I said, you know, look, like the, I, I think both of our ethos is, is like, you know, be ready early, you know, make sure you don't change a great deal, just, you know, manipulate very small things. Yeah. Um, like only as and when you need to as well. If you don't need to manipulate it, don't change it, keep it the same. Be ready early, like I said, um, and enjoy it as well, man. Like, you're going to enjoy it. And like me personally, as I said, avoid going backstage too early, getting involved in things that you don't want to get involved in, speaking to people that potentially don't want to speak to, that like you almost feel like you have to. Um, so, yeah, so I, I think that would be a great take home. What about yourself? I think, I think, yeah, I think num number one, your enjoyment is going to come from your ability to actually turn up on the day, like 100%. And that is, so do the hard work. Don't, don't cut corners. Like for me, don't turn up on the day and wish you could have done more. Leave it all out there. Leave it all out there. As an experienced compared to myself, Rob will agree. Like you don't want to be backstage and feel like you could have done more. Mm -hmm. So yeah. do the hard work and get ready early. Expect the, unex the unexpected to the sense of don't expect anything. Yeah. Like, reiterate what you said rob but i think most importantly like understand that nothing needs to change if you're ready mm. like don't don't go and buy a shitload of chocolate don't go and buy a shitload of rice cakes if you've never eaten rice cakes before those magic rice cakes that have, yeah. that just happened to win you a pro card um because it's irrelevant so yeah get ready early be prepared to not change anything and just enjoy it man like enjoy it and I think I think it goes without saying like, if there's ever a question about anything for me or Rob, like drop drop into our DMs. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. We do, we do this out, we do this every single day. And also, like, I, I think what's probably very, very important for guys and girls, like if it doesn't feel right, mm. like if some if something you are getting asked to do, if you are being coached, like if it doesn't feel right and you can't have a definitive answer as to why you're doing something potentially like manage that expectations a little bit be okay to say no yeah i think i think that's the one thing with with like things like dialectic protocols that people are just becoming more aware of is just saying listen i don't understand why we're doing that like you know as i said if i do ever on a rare occasion use a little bit of our doctor i can explain why it is what yeah, it's course. doing and the fact that this is such a small amount. All I'm trying to do is just take off a little bit of water from you. Like I'm not trying to get you bone dry because you're already dry, you know? So yeah. yeah, I think that's one of the things with, with that, with diuretics, which is always a really good or not really good, but a, a, a question to ask. If somebody's asking you to use a diuretic, you need to be saying, why this diuretic? What will it do? What do I expect to happen? And potentially why are we using it? Cla cla clarification is always going to be key. And it, and it improves, it improves the relationship between you and your coach as well. Um, that that trust element has to be there and realistically like if somebody's taking you through a productive prep you haven't had to go to the extremities like getting lean is extreme anyway but if you don't have to go to the extremities of drug protocols cardio pro three and a half hours on cardio if you're doing three and a half hours of cardio a day you're doing something wrong yeah, yeah? um if you're on no carbs 50 16 weeks out from the day you start prep you're doing something wrong so if you're in a position where you can create some that communication um, line with your coach that you should have anyway, but clarification is key. 
if you can't if you can't if you can't get the answers you want there's nothing wrong with asking why i i do i know i know you do in, in any stretch of imagination i'm sure you chewed milos's fucking head off when he was coaching you yeah, yeah. like why am i doing this like it's not it's not because you're trying to take the information that they're giving you and try and sell it on do you know what i mean like you want to know because you need to know it also makes it easier down the line if you're doing multiple shows that that season you'll know rob like you're taking guys to like you said oh, i'll tell you what we did 500 grams of carbs you're a little bit flat next time we run you on show in two weeks time we we'll run six they've got an idea of what they're going through and yeah. why do you know what i mean so i think clarification is key communicate understand why you're running certain protocols if you're ever getting asked and if uh, if you do, if you don't have the answers that are satisfactory genuinely and they should be able to roll off the tongue really so if they've got to google it as to why they're giving you giving you a certain protocol they don't know what they're doing um and look after yourself because you don't want to be in a position where you're fainting backstage all of that hard work for 200 200 megaval that zone so yeah. Yeah. yeah do you know what i mean yeah no, it'd be crazy yeah it'd be crazy but you're, are you at the show on sunday are you i am i am i'm not going to be there saturday um i'm not going to bro saturday but i'll be there sunday so yeah. I will see you there. If you're there. Yeah, I'll see you Sunday, man. Uh, thanks ever so much, as always, guys. Like, awesome. comment, subscribe, five star rating, all that good stuff on the podcast. Um, but any questions or queries, as always, like Corey said, our DMs are open. If not, if you're at the PCA show on Sunday, we'll both be there as well. Take care. Thanks. Ever Peace. So much.